Nanotubers. Check out that D20 ice cube. Pretty slick. All right, we're gonna make some levers or some switches. We need some little sticks, tube, the wide popsicle sticks, your wife's emery board, and smash your grandfather's watch with a hammer. Oh, and sinkers. You're gonna need sinkers. Go ahead and cut that tube up into inch long segments. I like to make multiples of pieces so I can just do each step multiple times and then end up with multiples of the piece I'm working on. It's usually better to have several, you know, shelves, levers, tables, whatever you're working on. Do a whole bunch at once. Just use the drill bit there to by hand drill a hole in the cardboard for the lever later on. The curved end of these sticks is going to act as the sides. I'm going to use the first one as a template for the second, and while holding them together, kind of file them up so they stay uniform. Cut that off to a good length and then round it. Alright, you're going to want to get that lined up on one side where you kind of want it. And then drop three or four of those sinkers down in there. And then just bury them in hot glue. The hot glue will make its way through them to the other side to hold that side in place. And I just find that the sinkers add a really good heft to the piece, or really any piece. I use them a lot. It uh, makes whatever it is less prone to skip around the table as people move minis but also when it's interact with it just feels more real if it's got a good got a good weight to it when it when it seems heavier than you expected it to be then to attach that other side first you want to fill it up with some more sinkers and bury them in glue and then just make a little meniscus of hot glue on the top so that it's just enough sticking out to grab that other side and squidge off any excess You know the deal, just black bomb it. Then I'm going to hit it with this gun metal so that the sides and the inner spindle look like they're made out of metal. Okay, and just want to hit that handle real quick with a nutmeg or some similar brown just to differentiate it from the metal pieces. Okay, now you're going to want to select some gears, about three or four per side. Some of these gears will have little axles running through the middle, so they won't want to sit flat. You're going to want to make sure and find ones that will sit flat. And then just give a generous layer of 100% white glue. Relatively thick layer, so that these gears sort of sit down in it. And then you can arrange them so they're in an arrangement you like. Should probably be touching so they look like they're related to the mechanism in some way. When one moves, they move the other. Doesn't show up so well there with the glue wet. Let's see there, it's a little better. Did the other side. Now I'm going to use this Harvest Orange. I find this Harvest Orange to be a really good complement to the gunmetal. It really looks like rust, so I will use it to dry brush any of the edges and the gears to pop them out a little bit.
And then that main drum, I'll just stipple on some of that harvest orange. I mean, this thing's been sitting in a castle or a dungeon or somewhere for a long time. It wouldn't be pristine. It would begin to be pockmarked with rust. And then finally, I'm just going to take a very thin brush and paint in some shadows or cracks near the edge. Just to try and denote that that center spindle is a separate piece, is capable of movement, or rather to give the illusion. I considered making moving switches, and I suppose there's several ways it could be done. Uh, but at the end of the day, it just seemed like a problem not worth solving. So I went with a fixed one instead. There you have it. It's got a good heft to it with those uh, sinkers in there. And like I said, you can't flip it, but you can just turn it 90 degrees to indicate when it's been switched. There you go. 101 uses for your home or dungeon. See you guys.